and welcome to Gardening of 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be giving you guys an update on my cactus trough. Uh, basically what's happened is it's got a lot of mealy bug. It's not really done well for the last two or three years. So I'm going to completely replace it, start again um, with a complete fresh batch of plants. Make sure there's no infected material. I'm also going to sterilise everything and uh, should be good to go for a fresh new start. So I made this trough um, it was probably about four years ago now. It's just out of old timber. Um, the one underneath is actually about 100 years old. The, the side panels are just old fencing slats that I've sanded down and screwed together. So it's quite a solid um, trough. It's uh, fairly well built, it's, it's, it's nice and strong, holds a good amount of cacti. The reason I made it in the first place is it had a long window sill, and the whole window sill was absolutely full of all these cacti. There was even more than this in the trough originally. Some of them have died unfortunately because of the mealy bug. And um, what they were all in is individual pots, about nine centimeters inside in size and what happened is there was just the whole windowsill was full and I wanted to get more plants so what I did is I, I, I put them in quite a small spacing so that you can see here this is about how close they all were originally a couple of ones here have been taken off because they've died so they're really closely packed in um, and they were smaller at the time so it did work quite well and that really freed up a lot of windowsill space for me to allow me to have more plants but the first couple of years it went quite well uh, in the last two years, it's just there's been no growth whatsoever, barely. I mean, this cacti, for example, this Opuntia up here, the Opuntia grew to this size within about a year, and then I had to keep trimming it to keep it that size. But since the last two years, it's barely grown at all. It's only grown, I think, this weak pad and this one up here in the last two years. And normally, this would grow several pads at a time. And in fact, you can see in its first year when it was healthy, it grew this absolutely enormous one on the side. A really big pad but uh, it hasn't done any since then so I'm gonna have to replace that so the main reason everything seems to be dying is mealybug I tried to treat them in the past I've used swabbing alcohol and I've removed them all individually with little uh, we're using the spines of the Aponte actually to pierce them and remove them all but what keeps happening is they keep reappearing and I think what's happening is um, they're actually down in the roots so because they're in the roots it's really hard to them, for me to, to access them and what I could do is take every single plant out individually, scrape all the compost off and treat them like that. But my worry is there might be one or two mealybug, mealybug left over. And all it takes is one or two uh, mealybug left and then the pollen's just going to start all over again. It will just give me maybe a couple of years when the plants will grow well until the mealybug population gets high again. So because of that, I'm just going to start from scratch. I'm just going to throw out all these plants, unfortunately. But uh, most of them, as I say, have been dying in the last few years. I can show you some of the mealybug. These two plants as well, unfortunately, are infected because they're on the same windowsill. And you can see here, I'll just zoom into this one. So it's this white fluffy material right in here. The little hairs are actually from the cacti themselves, that's normal. But the little white fluffy material there, that's the eggs from the mealy bugs. Let's see if I can find the live ones. They tend to be kind of turquoise in colour. You can see there's one, there's a couple actually on this leaf, so I'll see if I can get that out. So you can see there, that kind of grey kind of turquoisey colour, I don't know what colour it is but a kind of grey colour right on the end, that's the mealybug itself that crawls around, sucks the sap out of the plants and weakens them and that's as I say infected all these it has also infected my plant in a stone which is a real shame I was doing regular updates on this as it was growing but in the last two years it's just completely stopped growing I've seen a few mealybug on the stems but I fear there's also quite a few inside the rock where the roots are so because of that I'm just going to place this as well which is a shame because it has done really nice and i've really enjoyed the little mini tree effect of it as i say it's just not doing anything if all the plants are very struggling to survive so this will need to be replaced but this also gives me an opportunity to revamp this i think what will also help is if i make the hole slightly larger so this is a natural stone i found it on the beach there is a hole inside it um and it's actually quite large it looks quite small from the outside but the inside is actually a lot bigger so there's a decent size, a bit of space in here. It's maybe the size of a, of a grape or something, but it gives enough root space for this to survive. But I quite like to expand that space. So what I'll get is I'll get my drill. Um, because it's a sandstone, it should be quite easy to drill into. I'm just gonna make that hole a bit bigger, a bit wider at the top, because you can see the stem here is getting a bit choked off because of the, um, the, the narrowness of the hole at the top. So if I can get, if I can get that a bit wider, that means the stem can get wider without getting so choked. But I do want to keep it quite small. I do want to have it look like a plant coming out of a stone and not like a stone that's made into a pot. So I'll keep the opening quite small, just slightly bigger. But it's really the inside I'm going to try and get larger by angling the drill in lots of different directions and just getting it a tiny bit larger. It doesn't need to be much bigger. 
but just a bit bigger. So the next plan can be th that bit more successful. So I'll probably put another Porticaria Afro in here, which is what this one is. Um, it looks a bit like a money plant, but it leaves are a lot smaller and it makes a very nice small mini tree when you train it as a bonsai. So I'll put the same one in again, I think, because that should do quite well. So with the trough itself, as I say, I'm going to take all the plants out, I'm going to remove all the soil, I'm going to remove all the stones as well. And then I'm going to get a isopropyl alcohol, spray the whole tray, really give it a good soak. Try and make it as clean as possible, make sure there's not any mini bike hiding in any of the cracks and crevices of the, uh, of the wood as well. And I'll probably leave it unplanted for a few weeks as well, because that way, if there's anything in there, they'll crawl out looking for plants. And I can treat them as they crawl around. I'm also going to keep that on the balcony, because on the balcony, I find mealy bugs in the UK, they don't really survive outside. So if I put that on the balcony, that shouldn't be an issue. It's just really the succulents that they go for, and they get really bad if it's in a, in a home environment like this. So I'll do that. I'm going to make a separate video about all the new plants I'm going to put in here. I'm hoping to get some of the similar cacti I have this time. Maybe not the Opuntia, because I think that it gets too large. Opuntia really needs a smaller space. I might get a different type of Opuntia, maybe a smaller sized one. This one is the one that gets to about three or four meters in height eventually. Um, so it'll become a real giant, so it's a bit big for this to be honest. But I'll try and get some flowering cacti as well. Um, I might try and get some of the Mamilia cacti, they always flower really well. Um, I quite like the rat's tail again, that's this one here. That has lovely pink flowers in spring. I'd like that to grow again. Same with the Echeveria. I really like them, so I'll probably get another Echeveria. Now the place I'm going to um, for the plants, they've changed their nursery supplier, so they're actually really good now. They've got all the names on little labels, a bit like this. So I'll be able to have all the Latin names, because the problem I've had in the past is when I go to the garden centres and nurseries, a lot of the time the, the label just says succulent mix or cacti mix. It doesn't tell you the exact Latin names, and then I have to spend ages looking up in the book, and even then I don't know the exact variety. Because I can maybe find this, the genus and the species, but not always the exact variety. So hopefully this time I'll get it all nice and labelled as well. And finally, the last thing I think that's, that's suffering a bit with this cacti trough is I put in a cacti mix in the trough originally. I then added some perlite for extra drainage and then mulch the whole thing in grit to make it look nice. I think the problem with that is although um, the cacti like the drainage a lot, it, the, because the soil was so free draining, what was happening is when I watered it, the water would come straight to the bottom and kind of pull there and the compost wasn't really absorbing it and spreading it throughout the whole trough. So you'd have some areas that were quite wet, other areas that were quite dry. So I'm, and what I'm gonna use is a slightly less free draining mix. That way, hopefully it will be able to absorb the water more evenly. I'll just be a bit more careful with the watering, but to be honest, because this trough isn't 100% waterproof, I never give it too much water anyway, because it could leak out the bottom. I have actually lined the bottom of it with plastic, so it shouldn't leak but I'm always a bit hesitant that it might, so I always, I'm quite careful with the watering to make sure it doesn't leak out the bottom. And anyway, being cacti and succulents, you don't want to overwater, that's the last thing you want to do because that will kill them. The fastest way to kill a succulent or a cacti is to drown it with lots of water. So that's about it for this video, I think. I'll, um, I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks time when I have this all planted up, I'll make a planting video for that. I probably won't cover it with grit to begin with. Um, I do like the effect of the grit, it looks really nice and neat. As I said in the past, watering was a bit more tricky. I could also I couldn't tell how damp the compost was that easily. I did use a moisture probe um, to tell how damp the, the soil was, but my moisture probe is very old. I'm not sure how reliable it is. So I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to keep it up, not mulched. I'm just going to have a bare compost. But I can always add compost later on if I feel the need. So that's it for this video. As I say, I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks when I'll hopefully be planting up this whole trough with a nice selection of cacti and succulents.